good Friday evening or late afternoon. Welcome back to Martin's Koi Pond. So, fish are a bit spooked up because I've just had the net in and I've netted this guy again. Um, he's in some Kusuri Sedate, so in a little while he should topple over. And I don't know if you can see, but these two scales are very raised and it looks like there's a lot of gunk still behind them. I am thinking of taking those scales out so I can clean the wound properly. This one at the front is healed up pretty much, but it's been two weeks since I last treated that and it looks like it's gone a bit fungusy and gunky behind there. So I've got my bits all ready. Just waiting for him to topple over. And would you believe it, it's just started to rain. So, I might get wet doing this. Anyway, back to you in a bit. Right, I wasn't able to film the treatment. There's Sharky, I think he's just gone behind the air rater. The Aragroke, he's back in the pond. Um, on advice uh, that I had of uh, a couple of people, I decided to remove those two infected scales and they were badly infected. So the treatment I did two weeks ago had done nothing. Um, there it is. So I removed the two badly infected scales, cleaned out all the infection uh, with wound clean, and then put some treatment on it and then sealed it with propolis, but the minute it went in the pond, the propolis just washed off. So, hopefully that will clear it up and those two scales will come back again. But, uh, he seems no worse for wear, for being knocked out for a little while they do recover really quickly once you put them back in the pond so there he is right on cue and I'll just have to keep an eye on that area and uh, maybe have to get him out again and treat it a couple more times anyhow on that note, I will see you in the next clip. Well, good Tuesday afternoon, and I'm a bit concerned. My big shower is just sitting on the bottom. Um, he didn't feed this morning, and that's the first time I, he, since he's been in the pond that he hasn't fed. And I've been home from work for nearly an hour and uh, he's just been sat in that spot. So, I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm doing a nitrite test, but that's, so far, not looking too horrendous. It looks like there's a trace of nitrite, but nothing more than that. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do the auto feeder goes off literally in two minutes time so I'm going to let them have their feed and then get the net out and maybe try and catch him and give him a scrape. Anyway, if I find anything I'll get back to you. Well, good Monday morning and welcome back to Martin's Koi Pond. Um, not really filmed much in the last few days and I didn't put a video out last Friday. Um, just didn't get around to filming any worthwhile footage. I've just seen footage of me treating Sharky Aragroki and my update on him is 
he's now almost perfectly healed. So what I did obviously has worked and he's looking absolutely great. Um, I was also showing you Mega the shower sulking at the bottom of the pond. I did scrape him but didn't find anything. However, the last few days, sweet corn has just been aimlessly hanging in the water column and not been feeding. So yesterday I um, caught him or her out, gave, uh, gave her a scrape and found flukes. So it may well be that Mega had flukes earlier in the week and I just didn't find them when I did his scrape. Um, Sweetcorn didn't have many flukes, but there were flukes. So yesterday um, I treated the pond with some flukosol by NT Labs because basically because I had it in the cupboard. Um, I know a lot of people have been having trouble with stubborn flukes this year. So I've ordered a pack of the Fluke Solve Plus, which should be with me by Thursday, Friday time. And at the weekend, I plan to do a treatment with Fluke Solve Plus and uh, give that a week then scrape a few fish see if there's any flukes left so that's the plan going forward um, first time I've actually found parasites in the pond so it was a bit of a shock to the system but a lot of people seem to have had flukes this year and uh, I guess it was uh, inevitable that at some point I would also get them. So the UV's off at the minute, and uh, that's just to allow them the medicine to do its thing. Um, pond is looking really good, and the flashing of the fish since I've done all those water filters on my uh, tap water and it's really really reduced and uh, really happy with the pond at the minute so not in a way that's why I didn't really record much last week because there was nothing really to say other than the pond was doing really well and of course yesterday we find the flukes so that's it for the uh, update for now and I'll get back to you later in the week. Good Monday afternoon. I'm sat right near the feeding station because they're obviously very hungry today and we keep coming here and checking if they missed some slither of food when the uh, feeder last went off just over an hour ago so they all come and check and then they'll disappear off to each end of the pond and as soon as one sort of gets under the square again they start all returning as you can see I put that flucosol in yesterday because of finding flukes on the uh, big Yamabuki. Now that fish is still sulking, but the rest just look absolutely superb today. I don't know whether it's just me imagining it, they just look super happy. Again. 
Anyway, the feeder next goes off at 7 p.m., so they've got two hours to wait. I just thought I'd uh, do a little close up clip of some of the fish because you often don't get to see them, you just often on my videos you see them more from afar than up close and personal. That Gorham over there in the square now is absolutely stunning. Right, hope you enjoyed that little clip of the fish. Catch you in the next one. So welcome back. And it's now 6.59. And as soon as it is seven o'clock on the auto feeder, it will start feeding them. And they are absolutely ravenous. They are really lurking with intent. Now I didn't buy this auto feeder because I'm a lazy koi keeper. I bought it to stop me overfeeding them, which I was doing because as we all know, Boy, our little beggars, as in actual beggars, begging for food all the time. And here we go. And the frenzy starts. And they will have you feed them as much as you are weak enough to do. So, I've bought this auto feeder to regulate how much food they get and to stop me overfeeding and allow my filters to be able to cope. They were struggling to cope when I was hand feeding. Now I do allow myself uh, to give the fish some treats every so often. Um, stuff like freeze dried uh, shrimp and krill and they had some frozen shrimp yesterday which was the first time I'd fed that and they enjoyed that obviously it defrosted first um, so they've eaten the majority of the food that just went in there's some that's floating about which the little fish tend to pick on because they don't like to get in the frenzy and the bigger ones will chew up what they grabbed in that first frenzy and then as you can see start coming back to top themselves up until it's all gone so there you have it that's the uh, my koi feeding they are being fed at the minute on kingsling koi elite which i'm reliably told is a kasuri it. Um, I still have a lot of Evolution Aqua Premier which I need to uh, use up so they may well get that next but uh, we'll see. Uh, one of the other YouTubers is able to supply food at reasonable rates as well now so I might buy some food off him at some point. That's Danny of Danny's Koi Pond. But anyway, I'll wind this bit up here and I'll catch you in the next clip. Well, good Wednesday afternoon. And uh, the Fluke Solve Plus has arrived. So I've got uh, a kettle of hot water uh, jug to weigh the Fluke Solve out and uh, my general purpose bucket to mix it all up in now someone's given me a tip that apparently if i use hot water um, the flute solve dissolves a lot better and uh, that tip was from danny from danny's koi pond who's used this uh, flute solve plus and had really good results with it um, so my pond's about nine and a half thousand liters so I'm going to treat it as if it's 10,000 litres. You put 4 grams in per 1,000 litres, so 40 grams I'll need. Um, so I'll get it all measured up and mixed up. And then I will uh, 
add it to the pond and show you the aftermath of it being in the pond. So back to you in a bit. Well, welcome back. The Fluke Solve Plus is in. <laughs> and look at the froth. <laughs> Skimmer. Can't cope with all the froth. Um, so, yeah, it's in. We'll just now have to um, see how the pond, uh, how the fish react to it. Obviously, they're all on the bottom at the minute. Um, but hopefully, in next week's video, I'll be able to give you an update on how the treatment has gone. So, that's it for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.